2019 was a huge year for gaming. We saw Fortnite challenged in the realm of Battle Royales with Apex Legends and uh, Tetris 99. We saw a battle between Steam and Epic for exclusive rights to new games being released, which is set to continue into 2020, while a couple of big name titles were delayed, in particular Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing, which are now set to release on the same day. As always, I didn't play every game that was released this year, but without any further ado, here are my top 10 games from 2019. A lot of attention for Metro Exodus was focused on the drama of its release. It was originally listed on Steam before being removed and made into an Epic Store exclusive. This distracted away from what was an amazing game, and in my opinion the best in the series. The scenery is stunning, ranging from the murky depths of the Metro to the awesome landscapes on the surface, creating one of the best looking games of the year. Gameplay wise, Metro Exodus is a true post-apocalyptic scenario. Ammo is scarce, weapons get jammed and require cleaning you feel very vulnerable the entire time. The beauty of the game is in the details though. Kill enough people in a neutral area and the remainder may just give up and surrender to you. Damage your gas mask and it will visibly crack and have holes, requiring you to tape them up, further adding to the claustrophobic nature the game is trying to push on you the entire time. Twenty nineteen saw a number of Souls like games being released. Games that follow the Dark Souls pattern of limited checkpoints, difficult enemies, and even tougher boss fights. Code Vein uses that recipe and throws in some JRPG style story and cutscenes, with many dubbing the game Anime Souls. You play as a remnant, a human that is able to revive upon dying. Upon each revival, however, a remnant loses a part of their memory, and the game's story is mostly told through these reclaimed memories of you and your friends. You have a variety of blood codes, essentially class types, that you can switch between depending on your playstyle and gifts to use, abilities that are either passive upgrades to stats or skills to use during fights. The difficulty curve is there, with the endgame bosses are very challenging. You can tackle them co-op with another gamer or with an AI partner, or if you're feeling fairly masochistic, you can do them all on your own. Remnant was referred to as Dark Souls with guns upon release. It has all the components, limited checkpoints and resources, difficult enemies and huge tough bosses, however it plays more like Gears of War or even Borderlands with its looting format. Your playthrough is procedurally generated. The dungeons and bosses you play at certain points in the game can be one of a number of different types, meaning multiple playthroughs are required to face all of the game's 28 bosses. Leveling up allows you to upgrade traits, abilities that give you bonuses such as firing speed or health, Weapons are found in secret areas or by killing bosses. It can be upgraded at the main hub, and the various stats on armor mean different builds can be made depending on your preferred playstyle. Co op is possible with up to two other gamers, while constant updates have most recently added a hardcore mode for the most determined of players. Fallen Order is probably the best Star Wars game in recent times, and has a shout of being named one of the best ever. The cinematics are outstanding, and it has to be one of the most visually stunning games of the year. The lightsaber combat is fluid, the force powers are fun to use, and the action is intense from start to finish. At times it feels like you're playing an uncharted game, leaping from structures and sliding down slopes, while at others it's almost like you're playing Monster Hunter, tackling huge beasts on the various planets that are ten times your size. With a lot of customization possible, secrets to find, and variable difficulty options, there's a lot of replay value here, and a challenge for even the most hardcore of gamers. I refer to a lot of games on this list as having great visuals, and Blasphemous is another game that ticks that box. Not for realism, but for the amazing pixel art. Some of the best I've ever seen, and, well, it's also very graphic. Yes, Blasphemous is one of the most violent games of the year, relying on a background of Roman Catholic imagery to give it a dark and macabre setting. Probably the best Metroidvania I've played since Hollow Knight, the gameplay is challenging, the bosses are spectacular set pieces, and there are tons of upgrades and collectibles to find across the map, with a ton of secret areas to find and side quests to discover that expands on the intricate lore of the game. I'm a sucker for a good story, and Plague Tale was the highlight of the genre in 2019. 
You play as 15 year old Amicia. She tries to protect her younger brother from the terrors of 14th century France, namely the bubonic plague, hordes of rats, the Inquisition, and the horrors of war. The game starts off with a majority of stealth gameplay as you try to avoid the Inquisition who are hunting you and your brother down, before meeting with more orphans that expand your arsenal where you can begin unleashing the ravenous plague rats on unsuspecting enemies or melting knights helmets to their heads with chemical projectiles. An intense and grossing story, A Plague Tale was my surprise highlight of the year. Devil May Cry has always been known for its over-the-top action, excessively long combos and cheesy cutscenes, and, well, DMC5 pushes all of that up to 11. One of the best action games of recent years, the game looks stunning, has an appropriately pumped up soundtrack, and multiple characters offering unique playstyles. Dante is, well, classic Dante, while Nero uses the Devil Breaker for various abilities and techniques, and V summons a number of demons to fight from range or up close. There's a multitude of upgrades for each character, hidden pathways to secret missions, and difficulty options that can crank up the toughness of the bosses. I had fun from the first minute until the last, and there's barely any downtime, which is perfect for a game of this type. Link's Awakening on the Game Boy is one of my favourite 2D Zeldas, so to see it remade was always going to be an exciting prospect for me. However, I wasn't expecting to see such a vast upgrade. The graphical style of the game is so unique, and something I've not seen in any other game before. It's almost like the world and its characters are made from plasticine. The whole of the original game is here, remastered in this new style, making the bosses and dungeons even more vibrant and feel more alive. There's extra content too, more seashells to find, more collectibles to hunt down, and there's even a dungeon creator, something I can't believe has taken so long to exist in this game. I found every item possible in the game and then spent even more hours creating my own challenges for myself and friends to take on, and was truly one of my highlights of the year. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, and after Resident Evil 7 back in 2017, I was expecting the franchise to take a new direction, much like Resident Evil 4 did 15 years ago. However, this remake takes us back to the old style, and it does it perfectly. The game looks gorgeous, it plays smoothly, and I would dare say this is the best survival horror game in the franchise. Leon is back to his first adventure, before he learned how to kung fu kick back in RE4, which adds to the tension as you have to rely on your limited stocks of ammo and dodging abilities to survive your encounters. I don't know what's more terrifying, the thumping footsteps of Mr. X as he relentlessly chases you throughout the police station, or trying to edge your way past the blind lickers before they maul you to death. This game puts you on the edge of your seat from start to finish and is up there as one of the best Resident Evil games Capcom has given us. Difficult? Yes. Frustrating? Even more so. But FromSoft have moved on from Dark Souls and made one of the most satisfying experiences in gaming, and Sekiro is my favourite title of 2019. There is so much to say about Sekiro that I could go on all day. The environments, the lore, the way you can sail through the air with your grapple or run across the rooftops. There are plenty of amazing bosses. Sword fighting with fellow shinobis, enormous bulls, ethereal headless spirits, giant apes, screen filling dragons, colossal demons smouldering with fire. Each boss is a new challenge and will test every fibre of your mechanical skill. You can attack, dodge and parry your way to victory and throw in the prosthetic arm which offers a number of skills and abilities to use to your advantage. Some have said this game is too hard, with many complaining it's even harder than Dark Souls, but despite the punishing nature of the game, I couldn't put it down until I had defeated every boss, seen every ending, and unlocked every achievement. If you want a game that will challenge you, but also reward you tremendously when you get it right, Sekiro is just the game for you. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
What was your favourite game of 2019? Anything you change about my list? Or did I miss out some of your favourite games? Let me know in the comments. Take care, and I'll see you next time.